enjoyed was sharing the class and enjoyed the And now the first book of Hebrews is Paul. We found, or we believe, the theologians are at end. They don't know just which or who wrote it, but I believe anyone with a little spiritual discernment would see it was Paul. It's, it's believed by the most of the writers to be Paul. Right. And how that he... In the first chapter, we found that it was exalting the Lord Jesus. Oh, how he brought down uh, to show by the by the experience that he had had on his road to Damascus. Now, Paul was, to begin with, a real theologian. Paul was taught under Gamaliel, one of the best teachers of that day. And he was smart and intelligent. And it was a real shrewd Bible scholar. And I found this when he was on his road down to Damascus with letters in his pocket to arrest all those that were in the blessed old gospel way. And the man was sincere. But I've always believed that since Paul seen Stephen's die, I think that must have got right next to him. Amen. When he consented to Stephen's death and held the coats of those who stoned him, then Paul was guilty of the blood of Stephen. And he confessed and said, I'm not even worthy, he said, because I shed the blood of his, of his mar- uh, uh, the martyr Stephen's. Because he witnessed to it. And if you witness to anything, you're just as guilty as being a partaker of it. So if we witness, say, oh, yes, they ought, and this, 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 so-and-so, be careful what you say. Because you're guilty the way your judgment goes. If you can't decide, don't say nothing. Just leave it alone. Then when you testify that you are a Christian, then you're guilty. See, you're guilty of being a Christian. And you must live to that. And when God makes a, a promise in the Bible, I see a man here in a wheelchair. When God makes a promise, he's guilty of that promise unless he brings it to pass. God's guilty when he makes a promise. And the scriptures are guilty until they're fulfilled. See, they're, they're right there as a, as a statement that God has made and it's got to be fulfilled or God's guilty. Amen. See? And so Paul being a teacher and coming on his road down to Damascus that day, about long about noontime, I suppose, there was a great light shined out of the heavens. And it blinded him and he, he fell to the earth. And he said, I want to know who it was. He said, a voice spoke and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? I believe the 8th chapter of Acts. And he said, who is it that I persecute? And the voice came back and said, I'm Jesus. Oh, I am Jesus, and it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. And what was Jesus then? Jesus, he was a light. Just a big light, shining bright. Now to encourage us and get a basis here. How was he a light when he was a man? Now, no one, is a bunch of soldiers with Paul, temple guards, going down to put under arrest. Paul was the chief captain. And they were going down to arrest those people for their campaigns and so forth and for their religious hope that laid within them. But now, here was Jesus as a big light. Now, if you remember, in the beginning, Jesus was a light. Jesus was the Logos that went out of God. And he... Uh, was uh, he was the angel of the covenant that led the children of Israel through the wilderness. And he was a pillar of fire Amen. that they looked at. Amen. And he was, and when he was here on earth, he said, I came from God and I go back to God. Amen. So if he came from a pillar of fire into a man, then if he went back to where he was, he went back to a light again. And there he was when Paul saw him, he was a light. Now, all those soldiers that was with Paul did not see the light. Then is it possible that one can see it and the others won't see it? Certainly. 
All right. He, Paul saw it, but the rest of them did not see the light. Now, when Peter was in prison, we find out this light came in the jail, opened up the doors, and he was, that light blinded the rest of the guards as they walked out. Peter going, and when he got to the door, it just opened itself quietly, Amen. closed behind him Amen. from the inner jail. He went to the outer door, it opened by its own self, closed quietly, and then he went to the gap, went out into the city street, and he rubbed his eyes as if to say, was I dreaming? He didn't know what had happened. But the angel of the Lord, the same angel that was a pillar of fire that walked Moses to the sea and spread her forth. Amen. Oh, and the Dead Sea, the Red Sea, walled up on both sides. Amen. And Israel passed over, and when they come to the swelling Jordan, Amen. he did not make himself visible there, but he was there because he just opened it up. Amen. And they went across in April, when the plains are all full of water, and he stayed the spring. And he stayed the snow from melting. Because it didn't wall higher and higher. It just stopped. Amen. That's our Jehovah. Amen. That's our Lord Jesus. Amen. Just stopped. Amen. And they walked across on dry land. Now, God promised that he would take care of them. So he was obligated to his promise. Now, Paul, where of these things? And knowing them, he was privileged because God was speaking directly to Paul. He wasn't speaking to the soldiers that was with him. He was only speaking to Paul. Amen. Now when the, when the angel of the Lord came down in the form of a star, and the stargazers, the wise men of India, when they saw that star and followed it for hundreds of miles, and it went over every observatory because they kept the time of the stars. And no one saw that star but the wise man. Amen. Oh, my. Doesn't that thrill you? Amen. Then you see, God doesn't deal with organizations. He doesn't deal with groups of people. He deals with individuals. Amen. He reveals himself to individuals. And now, now to say this not to, God knows my heart. And not to say this for own person. Personal praise. Not just to be there. But did you know that same God? Amen. That same Jesus? Amen. Is with us this morning? Amen. You know each one of you has a little individual witness of it right now? Amen. That he's here? And he's, he's done something for us in this day that he didn't do in the other days. Amen. He had his picture taken in this day. Amen. We got it hanging right there, see? The pillar of fire. The same Lord Jesus. Watch how he works. Now, if he's the same Lord Jesus, he'll do the same things. For the Bible said he is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Now, before Paul would announce anything... Whether this was right or wrong, he first went down into Egypt and spent three years to find out if it was scriptural or not. Did you ever know that? After Paul's conversion, he went to Egypt for three years. There he abode, and therefore he learned this great wisdom. Now, not in any comparison at all, I'm just giving you how the Holy Spirit still remains the same. Now, my church here remembers years ago when this angel would appear and would show things. I was a little skeptic of it. All of you know that, you old timers. If, you, if that's right, raise up your hand when you've heard, you look at the church yet from the old timers. See? I was skeptic because preachers told me it was of the devil. And I kind of believed it. But I waited. I wouldn't say nothing about it. But oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. One night, down there, he come down, an angel, and revealed it in the Scriptures. Amen. And he was. And when I seen it in the Scriptures, 
than to blast across the world with it. Amen. The message from there is when Or Roberts, A. A. Allen, Tommy Osborne, Tommy Hicks, and what more? See, it's a message to the people. And Jesus is the same yesterday, day, and forever. Is scripturally. He's the same. He does the same. He is the same. And he works the same. He manifests himself the same. And he's here this morning the same. Now we may see him, we may not. Whatever it is, we got a witness right now that he's here. Now, we find out that Paul, upon this experience, and in writing these letters, most of them from jail, he had compared the Old and New Testament. Now remember, the last writer of this Bible, by inspiration, God came down and told him, If any man shall add anything to it, or take anything away from it, the same will be taken out of the part of the book of life for him. So we'd be daring to add one thing to it. Amen. Oh, it must stay as it is. Amen. Mustn't be anything added to it. And we must contend for everything that's in it. Amen. I don't want any more and I don't want any less. I want just what it says. Amen. Now, this book of Hebrews, the reason I've chosen it, one purpose, one thing, this letter of dear brother Branham and so forth, and uh, uh, we want to stay with the word. Now, the first chapter was the exalting of Jesus. So he's the main one. And Paul let us know the other night that he was in the great beginning. And we found out that he was nothing less than Mel. Chesedek, the king of Salem, the great of the seventh chapter. And now this morning we approach him from a, another, uh, another standpoint from the second chapter. Now after Paul giving us this great marvelous message of exalting Jesus and even made the angels to worship him and I think over here like the earth hides old and it folded as a vesture, but they shall perish, but thou remainest. And over in the second chapter, the second verse, I believe it is, hath he uh, these days spoken to us by his son in the sundry times and divers manner he spoke with the prophets. We went through and found out what the prophets was and how God brought his message by the prophets. But in this last day he's spoken to his son Jesus Amen. by the Holy Spirit. He spoke to the prophets then. Then we got back and found out all those prophets had the Spirit of Christ in them. We went back to Joseph and found out he perfectly typed Christ. Amen. Went back to Moses and found he perfectly typed Christ. Then we come down then to even David. And when David was rejected in Jerusalem, not knowing why, but went up over the hill and looked back on the Mount of Olives and wept over Jerusalem because he was rejected, 800 years the man, the son of David, was rejected as king in Jerusalem and sat on the same hill and wept. Oh, the Spirit of Christ dealing with individuals. Now Paul starts off to say, Therefore we ought to give the more... Earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Amen. Second chapter now, we're starting. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest any time we should let them slip. Oh, may God drive that home Amen. in this tabernacle this morning. I pray the Holy Spirit will sink that so deep into your heart. We ought to give the most earnest heed to the things which we've heard. What type of people ought we to be when we see the great Jehovah come down and do the things that He does and see Him compared Scripture by Scripture that they're the truth? And we sit around sometimes like a 
warts on a log. And just so unconcerned, we ought to be busy every minute trying to get people to Christ. We ought to be lively stones. We should never be slowful like we are. We'll go up to church and we'll see the Lord Jesus do something or, or bless us in such a way. And then we'll, we'll go back out and say, very nice meeting. Now the preaching of the Word, we enjoy it, but that's not the main thing. That's not, we should not worship the Lord just after we get through preaching the word as we usually do. Just worship Him. That's wonderful. But we should worship Him every hour of our life. When we're at work, we should worship Him. Every time the opportunity presents itself, worship the Lord by testifying of Him. If you see some of you ladies see a woman in the wrong, Worship the Lord by taking her and saying, Sister, there's a better life than this. You man at your work, when you hear a man using the name of the Lord in vain, get a chance to one side and step over and take him by the hand and say, You, there's a better life than this. You shouldn't use those words. And tell him in a meek, gentle way, All those things is a worship. And when we see someone sick and the doctor says there's no more can be done, we are to worship the Lord by telling him there's a God of heaven that answers prayer. Amen. And then when we see those things take place that we do see take place in them, we should never let these things slip. We just let it go through our fingers. That's what's the matter with the great Pentecostal church today. They've let the very cream of the crop slip through their fingers when they had it in their hands. But look what they've done. They've done like the rest of the churches. They've run in the gains in the way of Korah and perished and the way of Cain and perished in the gains saying of Korah. They've organized. Instead of having a brotherhood where we could all be one, they've organized themselves. Made little organizations and little isms and sprung up from there and just broke up brotherhood. And if you don't watch, the Baptists and Presbyterians are going to pick it up. Because God's able of these stones to rise children to Abraham. And we've, we've let it slip away from the hands by being disunified. How did the Indians lose this country to the white man? It's because they were disunified. If they'd make one big forefront, but they were fighting one among each other, they would have held their grounds. If they'd all come together, how are we going to lose it? Because we're disunified. How we lose our experience with God is because we disunify. We set up one and call this the, the Methodist, and this the Baptist, and this the Assemblist, and this the Oneness, and this the something else, and the Church of God and the Nazarene, the Pilgrim Holiness. We disunify the body of Christ. We should never be divided. We might differ in ideas, but let's be heart and heart brothers. God wants us to be. He died for the entire Church of God. And we do not want to be disunified. Now, we ought to give the most earnest heed. Lest any time we should let them slip. For if the words spoken by angels were steadfast. Amen. You hear? If the words spoken by the angels. Now angel is a messenger. Amen. The word angel means a messenger. And it just got through in the first book here. God in sundry times and divers manner spoke to the fathers by the prophets. That was God's messengers. Amen. And they were, if they were God's messengers, they were God's angels. A messenger is an angel, or an angel is a messenger, rather. Amen. A messenger. You are a messenger this morning. You're, you are a messenger of good news or a messenger of bad news. 
will stand by his word. He promised he would do it. And we ought to give a more earnest heed to these things which we heard. Lest any time we let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels, the prophets, were steadfast. Worthy? We could spend a week on this. Praise God. Was it steadfast when Moses spoke? Amen. It sure was. Amen. How about Elijah sitting up on top of the mountain? The Lord told him, get up there, Elijah. I'll stay there with you on some fellowship. God likes to fellowship with his people. But we won't stand still long enough for him to fellowship with us. We're so busy skipping about from place to place and so much. Sit still, Elijah. He wanted three years and six months of fellowship. We can't give him three minutes hardly. Three years and six months of constant fellowship. Oh, I love that. So don't worry about the cooking. We'll have that already fixed up. The crows is going to feed you. And everything's going to be all right. I just want some fellowship. This old prophet Elisha set me up there on top of the mountain. While he was fellowshipping with God. While the captain said, I believe I'll go up and get him. Now, don't you never try to break that fellowship. Amen. So the captain come up with his great army of man at 50. And he said, I, I, I come to take you, Elijah. And Elijah stood up, watch out. Here's the prophet of the Lord. He said, if I be a servant of the Lord, let fire come from heaven and devour you and down come the fire. Captain said, oh, you know what? The king rather said that was probably a, a thunderbolt. Just some lightning is passing over and it struck him. I said another 50. Elijah stood up. One of the angels, his word, steadfast. Yeah. He had to be a just recompense for everything that was done wrong. He said, if I be a servant of the Lord, let fire come. And the second 50 burned. Amen. All right. Every recompense... For if the words spoken by angels were steadfast, and every transgression and disobedient received a just recompense. Now, here's the great thing, the next verse. How shall we escape? How shall we escape? If Elijah's voice brought destruction because he was an angel... Of the Lord, how will we escape when the voice of Christ speaking to? Or how can we fail when you're prayed for? If it's a voice of Christ. Amen. If Christ ordained his church to pray for the sick and the church does what he says he for them to do, then how can it ever fail? Oh, it can't. You can fail, but it can't fail. Amen. And as long as you keep it, it'll take you through. Amen. If you fail, you fail by yourself. You just get away from the Word. But as long as you stay with the Word, it can't fail. Amen. For the Word of the prophets did so and so. Amen. How much more will the Word of Christ be? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which is at the first begin to be spoken unto us by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Amen. Think of it. Spoken by the Lord. How many times could we go back? Where could we stop right here for an hour? Amen. When Jesus came, he's the same yesterday and forever. Now remember, it first began to be spoken by Jesus himself. And then was confirmed by the ones that heard him. Amen. Now... Listen at him. When he came to the earth, he didn't claim to be a healer. He said, it's not me that doeth the works, it's my Father that dwelleth in me. Amen. He doeth the works. The Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing. St. John 5, 19. Watch when Philip came to him. Nathaniel, after Philip's conversion, he went over and got Nathaniel. 
said, come see who we found, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And he said, could there be any good thing come from Nazareth? He said, come see. That's the way to be convinced. Prove it. Come and see. Oh, that's the best I ever heard. Come and find out for yourself. Don't stand out and criticize or on the sideline, but prove all things and hold fast to that what's good. Come and see. Along the road they went talking. When he walked up in the presence of the Lord Jesus, he said, Behold an Israelite in whom there's no guile. It took all the skin off of him nearly. He looked around and said, Well, Rabbi, when did you ever know me? You never did see me. How do you know me? Philip said before, uh, when he called, I said before Philip called you yesterday when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Amen. Amen. He said, Thou art the Son of God. You're the King of Israel. Amen. A woman walked into his presence and he said, Go get your husband. She said, I have none. Said, That's right. You got five, and the one you're now living with is not yours. You told the truth. Amen. Think of it. Amen. She said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. That we know that when the Messiah cometh, he'll tell us all things. He said, I'm he that speaks to you. Amen. And she ran and told the man of the city, come see a man who told me all that I did. Isn't this the Messiah? It was spoken by the Lord. What happened? Jesus said before he left, the things that I do shall you also is that right? Amen. The things that I do shall you do also. Even more than this, for I go to the Father. Oh, I can see them as they went forth everywhere. Mark 16, went forth everywhere, preaching the Lord, Amen. working with them, confirming the word. Amen. And here Paul giving the same thing. He said that the gospel began to be preached by Jesus and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. Amen. That's the foundation Amen. stone. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the foundation stone. And the faith Amen. 2,000 years has passed. Atheists has raised an infidels and skeptics and agnostics. Yeah. But today that same Amen. Jesus Amen. confirms Amen. his word in the same Amen. manner Amen. by those who hear him. Amen. Hear him don't mean just to hear a sermon. That means hear him. Amen. <laughs> yes. How shall we escape? Where is our escape? Oh, you say, bless God, I belong to the Methodist Church. I'm a Presbyterian. I'm a Pentecostal. That doesn't have one thing to do with it. And you get on a sideline and want to call it spiritualism or some mental telepathy or some devil or something. Shame on them. If every word was steadfast by the angels, Jesus said it's not a little while in the world won't see me no more. Yet ye shall see me, for I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the age. Amen. And when we see him come down to continue Amen. to confirm his word, Amen. how shall we escape Amen. if we suck into some church Amen. or some organization or denomination Amen. or some little pet theory of our own? Amen. We better turn loose for every sin received a just recompense. Are the angels how much more when the Son of God is speaking from the heavens to make manifest His Word? How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Oh, my. God also, fourth verse, God also bearing them witness Watch this. The Lord bore witnesses. 
Oh, I am so happy for that. The Lord bore the witness. Look, when Elijah sat on the hill, and he said, If I be a man of God, let the fire fall from heaven and consume you. God bore witness that he was a man of God. God always bears witness. Your life will bear witness. I don't know what your testimony is, but your life speaks so loud your voice can't be heard. But your, your living, your everyday life will testify what you are. God bears witness. Yes, the Holy Spirit is a seal. And a seal takes both sides of the paper. They see you standing here and see you when you go away. Not only church, but at everyday work. You're sealed on both sides. Inside and outside. By the joy that you have. And by the life that you live. You're sealed in and outside. That you know you're saved and the world knows you're saved. By the life that you live. For God bears witness. Blessed be His holy name. My, I feel religious. Think of it. Brother, there, oh, my sheep, you're my boys. And a stranger they won't follow. Oh, how that our names are on the palms of His hands as before Him day and night. His word is always before Him. His promise. He can't forget it. And He loves you. Now He'll bear witness of His own. If you don't open your mouth and say a word, the world will know something's happened to you. Bear witness. Both by signs and wonders. And by divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to His own will. Let us take just one scripture now before closing. On the day of Pentecost, when they received the Holy Spirit, about four days later, Peter had passed through the gate called Beautiful, he and John. They said, look on us to a man. And he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I'll give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man looked up and never questioned nothing about it. He just stood up and went walking. They were ignorant and unlearned men. But the Bible said they had to take heed to them. For they knew they had been with Jesus. Brother, when the world knows that you've been with Jesus, when you can live such an unadulterated life in this present world and in this darkness, but the world knows and can see that you've been with Jesus. When a rugged old vulgar prostitute of the street can become a lame washed in the blood of the Lamb. God's bearing witness that He lives. Take a drunkard who's so low down that he would run around on his wife. That he would mistreat his children and take the food from the table to spend on a prostitute. Let him get with Jesus once. Amen. You'll see him returning like legion. Amen. Who was in his right mind and clothed to Amen. his babies and to his wife and to his loved ones. Amen. Certainly, some time ago, about 40 years ago, when the religions of the world met and the different ones got up and spoke and the Muhammad spoke for the Muhammad religion. The Jan spokes for the Jans, the Buddhas for the Buddha. And when little doctor, uh, I forget what his last name was just at this time. I didn't know his name, but I have forgotten. He spoke to represent Christianity. And he told the story of Lady Maccabee of Oklahoma in America. She was so honorary and so low down. So even when they went to kill her, 
They wouldn't even put their hands on her. She's so vulgar and vile. They had her arrested on a charge, smoking a cigar, driving a stagecoach and broke the, the, the laws, the records in Oklahoma when she passed through the street driving four head of horses. And she was so vile and so dirty until society would even get around where she was at. So much so when the executors was going to execute her, they wouldn't pang her. They just poured tire and feathers on her to kill her. And when this little preacher gave her story in such a way till they had the people sitting on the end of their seats to listening what would be next. When he got out of that very vile, dirty, low down to the laws, wouldn't he want to fool with she is so low? The very devil of hell would reject such a person nearly the way he told the story. Then he said, gentlemen, how the religions of the world has your religion got anything that would clean the hands of Lady Maccabee? Everybody sat still. Then he kept his hands together and jumped up in the air. He said, glory be to God. The blood of Jesus Christ will only clean her hands, but it'll clean her heart and make her hands. Tell you amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. This grace that taught my heart to fear, it was grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Certainly, how shall we escape if we neglect such? You neglect to eat, you'll die. You neglect to turn a corner, you'll wreck. You neglect to milk the cow, she'll go dry. You neglect your teeth, you'll have to have them all pulled out. Certainly, you pay for your neglect. Oh, Brandon Tabernacle and you visitors, let me tell you something now. You neglect to testify of the glory of God. You neglect to give God the praise of the glory. You'll find yourself cold, farmer, and backslidden one of these days. You give God praise. How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It's getting late. I just happened to notice Brother Tom's walked in back there. We'll close and continue this tonight. The Lord willing. Let us pray just a moment. Our Heavenly Father, to Thee be blessings and praises and honor and glory and wisdom and might and power forever and ever. Oh, to that Lamb that sit on the throne, dominions and kingdoms and everything was given over to His hand. When He raised from the dead for our justification, He screamed to the world, all powers of heaven and earth is given into my hand. Go ye therefore to all the world and preach the gospel. Oh, dear dying lamb, thy precious blood shall never lose its power till all the ransomed church of God be saved to sin no more. Help us as ministers to seeing that we are requiring so much. How we must have a church, we must have this, we must have everything. Our women, before going to churches, yet calling themselves Christians, will have to have a certain kind of a dress or have to be dressed so badly. And preachers will have to have so much money before they'll come and everything has to be so and so. Oh, Christ. When I read here how they wander about in sheepskins and goatskins, lived in the dens of the earth and caves, they wandered about under vile persecution and yet obtained the faith under the ministry of angels. How will we escape when the Lord Jesus has given us fine homes and cars and clothes and food and we murmur, we sit around, we're lazy, we never try to get out and do something about it. How will we escape God? Oh, I pray that you Burn old-fashioned conviction in the ever heart this morning, Lord. That the people might be up and at it. 
Let us work while the daylight is shining because the sun is swiftly sinking. And civilization is going. And there will be no more time. It will blend into eternity. Oh, God, grant the day that we go with fresh vision, with wisdom, with understanding to know how to approach sinners and bring them to Christ. Hear the prayer of your servant, Lord. I ask that there be any here that doesn't know Christ as their Savior. Would you raise your hand and say, remember me, Brother Branham? Would you just raise your hand and say, remember me? I want to be a Christian. I don't want to neglect it any longer. God bless you back there, sir. Someone else say, I want to raise my hand, Brother Branham, and I want to accept Christ as my Savior. I've neglected all the time. Oh, I go to church. Sure, I belong to church.